Hi there folks, and welcome to another episode of Michael's Backyard Marina. Well, we had an interesting day yesterday because when I got home, uh, it was about 4.30 in the afternoon, tornado warning, tornado warning. You know, everybody hears tornado warnings, they go, yeah, 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 whatever. <laughs> hey, they're real buddies, I'm telling you. We had a tornado pass, and I got video of it, passing a half a mile west of my house. I could watch it go across, the whole storm system went across. We could see white things up in the up, up, up in the clouds spinning around and stuff out there. And we're like, what the heck is that? Look like paper flying around. It was sheet metal. It was tin off of farm buildings. It was exciting to say the least. We did a little drive around and unfortunately there are several people that lost their farms, their homes, and for miles and miles in, in multiple directions, power lines down. My wife and I drove around and kind of scouted out. There's just devastation on a path. It was amazing. I've never been that close to a tornado, seen the devastation live in person, and it is real, folks. It is so real, and a lot of you already know that. I'm just preaching to the choir when, it, when I'm telling you guys that stuff. But it was, it gave me a lot, a lot of new respect. Now, we were watching it from underneath the deck on the back of my house, and we were ready to see when it came, if it was heading our way, we were ready to head right in the basement and hunker down. We were going to be safe. But we're also being very aware of, you know, it's not the tornado necessarily that gets you. It's the stuff in the tornado that can hit you. And you won't even see it coming. But anyway, it was exciting. And unfortunately, no lives were lost. That was the awesome part. Thank the Lord for that. So on this episode, we're going to do something that's interesting. I feel it's interesting. And if, if you have a boat with a stern drive, period. A boat with a stern drive, period. Uh, I'm going to show you, I've had several of them on and off my boats. I've done several videos of taking these on and off. And then I got to thinking, not everybody has all the same tools, same equipment to be able to do this. Now, it doesn't take a lot of tools to remove a stern drive off the back of a boat. A couple of wrenches, you can take some bolts off, make a little click drop, and then you can slide it on off. That's the easy part. I'm gonna say that's the easy part, but it, they are heavy and they are awkward, but sliding them out is easy. Putting them back in is a little more difficult. I don't wanna build us a tool here that you can build at home with minimal tools. And I'm telling you, I'm trying to keep it down to just uh, wrenches, uh, a few wrenches, you can get all the adjustable wrenches even, so they're going, going very generic on the wrench world. Uh, I'm going to have a, a jigsaw, some plywood, some bolts, some nuts, uh, a couple of casters. Okay, four. That's two couples. And uh, what else am I going to do here? And we'll, we'll, I'm going to take you all along this journey on how to build it. And I'm going to show you how I decided to build it and uh, how, where I got the idea for it. And we'll go from there. But uh, I'm trying to keep this build, let's just call it under a hundred bucks. Uh, and you know, if you took your stern drive to a marina to, you know, change just the water pump, you're gonna spend way more than a hundred bucks, guaranteed. You're gonna spend your probably 40, 40 to 80 bucks in parts and new gaskets and all that fun stuff, you know. Do it yourself. I'm a guy that hates paying for something that I can do myself. I became that kid when I was 16 years old and I took my first Yamaha 650 motorcycle to a, a repair shop, a motorcycle shop to have them do a tune-up. And took it in there, I said, I want a tune-up. What's a tune-up on a 1979 650 Yamaha? It's spark plugs, it's points, it's changed the oil. General tune-up, you know. I go and pay my money, my hard-earned 16-year-old money, got it out of the shop, riding it back home, I didn't get two miles from the shop and it started doing the same missing and everything it was doing before. Well, I go in there and pull the spark plugs out. The spark plugs were never changed. They were the same spark plugs I had in there. And there's no way they had the amount of burn and everything they had going on on them in the two miles that I drove it home. And so then, so I started digging into it a little bit more. Then I opened up the points cover and I pulled off the points. What does it have to do with anything? I'm just telling you a story, okay? Just Stick with me for a second. Pull the points cover out, open up the points. Points are chalky burnt. They charged me for doing absolutely nothing. I went back and they're like, no, we did a tune up. Yeah, we did a tune up. I'm like, no, you didn't. Took advantage of a 16 year old kid. From that day forward, 
And I'm sure there's hundreds of you or thousands of you out there like that that says, that will never happen to me again. I'm going to learn how to do my own crap. And I'll never be a victim of thievery again when it comes to the repair world. Now, that being said, there's a lot of fantastic mechanics out there. A lot of very honest mechanics out there. And when you get one, you hang on to them like they're your good doctor, you know, uh, because people you can trust. I deal with some people at work that have had bad experiences and have good experiences. So, and, and that when a small town, when you're a bad mechanic, you don't stay in business long. When you're a good mechanic, you will thrive. Anyway, with that being said, that's why I work on my boats. And when I got a boat, boats are, they can be expensive if you don't do the work yourself. Yes, you know, the whole acronym about what a boat stands for and all that stuff. I'm not even gonna say it out loud because you guys have heard it a thousand times. But the reason I started this channel and the reason I do what I do is to help everybody out there enjoy the sport of going boating, fishing, and having a boat, and keeping the cost to a minimum. And that's what this is all about right here, is how do I keep the cost to a minimum? How do I do the work myself? How do I, as a novice that has never pulled a stern drive off the back of a boat, or the out drive off the back of the boat, um, how do I do it and success, be successful and put it back on successfully? Well, this is one tool I'm gonna give you. So in this video, what we're gonna do is design and build us a tool for less than 100 bucks, is the goal and I'm not gonna have blueprints or anything but you guys will all get the idea I will give you some key dimensions that may help you on your journey and you can watch this video over and over again and uh, maybe if I get enough request for a blueprint so to speak or a rough napkin sketch let's call it I might put that out there in a link in the description or email me and I can send it to you type of thing but there again I don't want to put that much effort into it because this brain here just can can develop and build stuff, you know. Uh, if you can watch and watch me and say, "Hey, I can build this tool we're getting ready to build." If I can build this, then there's nothing on that boat you can't do. Trust me on that. By watching videos, applying what you watch to and, and applying it to the activity you're doing on your boat, whether it's valve adjustment, carburetor rebuild, oil change. Uh, what else is there really? You know, changing out throttle cables. There's, there's this very simple points, uh, converting it to electronic ignition. Uh, all that's on my channel if you search for it. I've done enough of the, especially when you're talking Mercruiser, <laughs> inline four cylinders, you know, the 120 horse, 140 horse, and some of the 165 horse. There's a few videos out there. Anyway, if you, the four, the one, the 120, the 130, 120, 140, and uh, 165 horse, everything I'm going to show you here is the same. It's very similar, especially when you're dealing with the boats, uh, the vintage that I'm dealing with. It was in the 60s all the way up until, you know, you can get up into the th 2000s and even newer. The outdrives have not changed that drastically, basically because outdrives are going away. They will be a thing of the past eventually because the outboard itself has come so far in the, in the matter of it's quiet, it's four stroke, it takes up less boat space in the boat and they have just as much power. But for those of you that get into boating like I do with three to $600 boats, I think the most I paid, honestly, the most I paid for a boat, and this is gonna blow your mind, is that good enough John boat. I paid, what was it? For the boat motor, boat, two motors and a trailer, I paid 800 bucks total. So you take those two outboards out of there that I bought, and they're both 25 horse outboards. That was probably $500 worth of the value of the $800. So there again, did I keep the boat? Yes, below 300 bucks and under 600 bucks? You bet I did. Anyway, I'm talking, talking, talking. There's a few of you out there that leave comments. You talk too much, that's tough. That's me, that's my channel, it's what I do, but I'm gonna teach you some stuff along the way. Okay, with that being said, is there anything else? But what I wanted to bring up to you is the, the fact that you can go out and buy this. There's tons of $500 bolts, boats out there with these Merc Cruisers, and you can get them running. You can get them. I got a green one. Out, I got a 1977, and I got a red one out there. I have no idea what the year is, and they'll both be running this summer, and not necessarily on the water, but we will get there. But like I said, you follow my channel. You do searches through my channel. You will find everything you, almost everything you need to know about these outdrives other than rebuilding them you know as far as tearing them down and eventually that will be coming too especially with the help of stern drive engineering they are going to be uh, i've got a catalog they've got 
you can buy all the gears, all the seals, and everything for these out drives. They also sell brand new SE106. This is what I'm going to be putting on a boat. That's part of what started this video in this direction. I'm going to show you how to pull it off because I wanted to safely put this on a boat without damaging it, damaging the paint, you know, accidentally dropping it, tearing seals, any of that kind of stuff. I'm going to turn you around here and I'm going to show you some out drives. All right. All right. What we've got here is several. This is an Alpha 1. These are some older ones. As you can see, a lot of these have the hook on them. No hook. The new SD106 I'll be installing on a, on a boat. No hook. So what's the best way to handle these things? Well, getting them out, like I said, is easy. You can grab them right here, bounce them, take the nuts off, and slide it on and off. That's fine. But putting it back in and trying to wrestle this thing by yourself, that's why the title of this video, I think I have it in there, is this, uh, uh, when you don't have four hands, what do you do? Okay, let's spin you around here again. All right, you're asking yourself, Michael, what am I looking at? Well, when I had the idea to create something, this is not what I'm teaching you how to build. This is not it. This is a motorcycle lift that I built when I had my Harley. And it's a necessary evil. They call them AT ATV lifts as well. This has a hydraulic jack here. So you can jack this thing up and get it up to a certain height. But what I did is took the, you know how I have this thing on my bench over there. I showed you that in earlier videos. If you've been following me for a minute where I've got this so it goes into a receiver that's welded to my bench so I can work on these. Well, then I got thinking, <coughs> excuse me. Well, I got to thinking, hmm, can I make something that goes onto here and then be able to lift this up? And then the, the answer was, absolutely. I can do anything I put my mind to. But the other thing, I went around to all my boats and I measured uh, basically where this cavitation plate was in relationship to the ground. So right there, that cavitation plate, and I got anywhere from 17 inches to 22 inches. Right there, I'm sitting at 20. I can easily go up quite a bit higher. But obviously I can't go crazy amount lower because right now that's touching the ground. And guess what? When you're pulling this off, you won't be touching the ground with it. At least you shouldn't be. Because uh, if you drug it over into a location and did that, you might, you, you could damage it. So, with this geometry already figured out, and when I say geometry, I mean things on my current lift here. I can see what I've got going on here, what kind of distance I've got here. Now this is hanging way out in front of the wheels, but this thing's heavy enough and counter weighted enough that it doesn't let it tip forward. That's fine. I wanna make something a little less awkward than this even. So my goal is to take and have this area here, this whole thing, because the boat's that way, right? See what I'm saying? Boat's that way. This is all not in under the boat or anything like that. Uh, when you use a cherry picker, the wheels have got to go underneath the boat and all that fun stuff, and you can do it with one like this. But with one without a hook, hard to do. So we're gonna create something out of wood. Yes, you heard me, wood. These things are not that heavy. They're awkward. I could pick, I'm, I don't know, do I have my scale out here? Be cool if I did. Well, if I actually discover the weight, I'll put it right down here as to what one of these average weighs. I shouldn't say average, what this one might weigh. And what, what should put you within plus or minus 10 pounds of most of them. Unless you get into these big high horsepower boats that maybe they're a little bit beefier. But you'll get, the, you'll get the gist of it. So the goal is to get this in some kind of cradle and back over the wheels a little more and also love to make it adjustable. That would be ideal. Here's my thoughts. So I went to my local... I hate to even say it out loud because I spend way too much time there, especially when it comes to trying to get something for a relatively decent price. And I'm not saying they're the best price on everything, but you know, they have, it's just fun to go there, okay? Well, I'm gonna try something with a, I got a Pittsburgh heavy duty bottle jack, four ton. Let's just unbox this real quick. 
and uh, get it out here so we can see it. Here's the instructions. There's the trash can. All right. So here's our little bottle jack, right? I've got a bottle jack on this other lift I built over here. What's another item that I picked up when I was there? I need four casters. And <laughs> you guys are gonna laugh, but I was gonna need a piece of plywood for, for the base. I was gonna hook casters too and all that fun stuff. And then when I got there, the casters that I wanted to use, were they were out of stock. And the next ones I could use, they were $4.99 a piece. So that's five bucks a piece. That's so 20 bucks in casters. And I could get this thing that's rated supposedly, whoops, supposedly it's rated for a thousand pounds. I guess for $18. So that's what I did. And it already gives me a pretty good start for a roller base. For my and it's longer it's long enough that i can i think i can get all my geometry let's call it all my stuff i'm going to build in place now you can build this out of steel absolutely you can build this out of uh plate stock and some thinner stuff but i'm going to use what you may or may not have laying around the house plus not everybody wants to use a hacksaw till their arms fall off not everybody wants to buy a portable bandsaw for 129 dollars just so they can cut this metal so they can make this thing most people have, you can get a jigsaw and most people have a jigsaw. If they have a jigsaw, they have a skill saw so you can cut your lumber and you got drill and drill bits. And that's as far as the crazy amount of um, unique tools that we're going to use on this job. So with that being said, let's get started. And the first thing we're going to do is create a template so I can... Make sure I have an opening big enough in my wood piece for that to slide into. So let's get started with that. First thing we're going to do is take a piece of cardboard and I want to cut me a template. <coughs> That'll let me, I don't really need a template as much as I just need to create basically this rectangle I have right here. Will work just fine. So I'll take this off and, you know, trace that out so I can trace that onto another piece of wood. That's what I'm going to do. So let's, I don't want to pick this up anymore. It's heavy. <coughs> okay. I got an old piece of plywood that was out in the back. It's obviously been weathered. It has sat out in the weather for longer than I cared to be proud of to mention. But, and it's not straight or flat or, but this is what we're going to use. That's what I'm trying to tell you. So we're going to make this about yay wide. I want this to be about the same width as this. I don't know why yet, but I think I do. If I change my mind as to why that is, you'll see it in the video. Mistakes are left in the video to improve our learning capabilities. Fact or fiction? I don't know. So anyway, I'm going to go ahead and lay that square out. I'm squaring it off one end. That way I'll have, you know, this thing should come out square then when I'm done. Not just square, but square enough. Yep, we'll go there. There we go. I can follow that line, I think. How long should it be? Go back to our, our model. And about there. Let's just call it somewhere along that line right there. Yep. That's it there. 
we're gonna lay out all our cuts here maybe how long is that gonna be 18 18 wide now this is based off of my piece of uh you know roller platform i'm starting with it's apparently 18 inches wide take notes while you're watching so you can pick up the same one maybe or something similar to it roughly 18 by 30. and then the gap The gap here, let's call it three and an eighth. Three and an eighth seem to fit that out drive. So three and an eighth it is. What's half a three and an eighth? I'm gonna tell you an easy way to figure out how to figure out half of stuff, especially when it comes to fractions. Yeah, half of three is easy, it's inch and a half. What's half of an eighth? One sixteenth. So that'd be what? One and nine sixteenths, right? Now figure, try to do that with a bigger number. Say 33 and 5 30 seconds. What? 3, 33 and 5 30 seconds? Well, I'm going to tell you an easy method. I'm going to start off simple. Eight and a half. Yes, that's four and a quarter. Easy math in your head. But I'm going to tell you a method that works. I learned this in high school. Back when they used to teach this crap. Eight and a quarter. How many times will two go in the whole number? Four times. Stick that number over here, that's a good number. How many times, don't, I'm sorry, and then if it goes in evenly, even number, eight, even, four, then you just take and double the denominator, which is, for all you youngins out there, the denominator is a bottom number on a fraction. So one quarter be one eighth, double the bottom. Easy, right? Uh, Eight and a quarter, four and an eighth. Easy. Now, when I said before, 33 and 5 30 seconds, I haven't done this on a calculator or anything, folks. I, honest to goodness, I have no reason to lie to you. So you take 33. This is easy now. 33. How many times will two go into 33? That's right, 16 times. Write that down. 16. That's your whole number still. So, and then you got, I said 33 and 5 30 seconds. All right. Take the bottom of the 5 30 seconds and the top of the 5, or the 5 and the bottom, add 5 and 32. What's that? 37. Double the bottom number then, 64. 16 and 37 64 is half of 33 and 5 30 seconds. This method works not just this time, every time. And it's going to make your life a lot easier when you're playing around with tape measures. Now, there's people that says, oh, go ahead and take your tape measure, you know, 54, and look at your number in the middle there. It's 30, 27. That's great. You can do that. What if somebody else is shooting you numbers and you're out there cutting and you don't have a tape on you? Anyway, I'm just saying. There again. Did anybody learn something? Dale? Put your hand down. All right, back to cutting this out. What did I say the number was? Three and an eighth? Yeah, three and an eighth, so one and nine sixteenths. Do, 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 do. Somewhere about there. So you can always double check it after you lay it out. Yeah, that'll work. Then we'll draw another line. This is gonna be our, one of our cut lines for making a pocket for the, the drive to fit into, right? All right, how deep does this pocket need to go? Look how lucky I got there's a hole in the middle here. That I'm gonna eliminate my piece of junk plywood. All right, we need at least 19 inches. 19, right there. Doesn't that have to be perfect? Just has to be there. Way to, way to treat your tape measure, Michael. Just throw it on the floor. You know, maybe you should borrow your tools if you're gonna treat your own tools like that. All right. I think we're ready to start cutting. Since the back, where most of these things go into is pointed, I'm gonna cut a radius in here, you know, just to be fancy. 
like Applebee's on a date night. Not to mention, I got some hole saws I just don't get to use very often, so let's give it a whirl. Now, I don't know if a lot of you like to do it this way, but I like to drill most of the way through from one side. Flip it, set. Oh my goodness. Wow. Stop. That way you can drill the rest of the way through from this side and you don't have all that splintering going on. See, just like that. And the nice thing is you're your puck doesn't get stuck as easily in your saw. Don't know if you guys knew that. Look at that, falls right out. That's some good looking plywood in there. You know, even though this has been out in the weather, I'm pretty sure this was marine grade plywood. The glue is holding up beautifully. All right, let's get the saw out. Let's get serious with it. Okay, what do I have here? Some leftover pieces of some half inch, looks like birch plywood, it's like three ply with the layers of birch on the outside. I used to use this stuff to make cornhole boards. Um, I'm going to do some rip cuts here and I'll show you what I'm going to be using this for. As you can see here on this apparatus, I'm following this same basic principle here. This is the legs that, you know, let this thing whoop, do its articulation thing, right? Seems to be the right height. Seems to be able to do some stuff, right? I'm going to mimic that. You know, if it ain't broke, fix it till it is. So what I got here is roughly, let's just call it 18 inches center to center on the bolts. So that's what we're going to strive for is 18 inches center to center. So I'm going to go ahead and rip cut these. And drill holes in it, 18 inch center to center. That's gonna be my arms that can move up and down. Yep, you're thinking wood, how can that possibly be strong enough? I don't know, but I'm pretty sure it will be. We'll be back when I'm ready to show you these parts. All right, everybody, we're back. When we left off, it's only been a second and a half for you. I faded out of what I was doing and faded into this, right? Well, we left off, I was gonna make some of these, and I did. You can see them right down here. Basically, did a lot of engineering off screen and a lot of cutting and uh, screwing and bolting. And I didn't figure out I wanted to bore you guys with all that stuff because the important part is the dimensions. So I'm going to take you over to the whiteboard and I'm going to show you a blueprint. And the reason I want to do this, this is for the handful of you. I know there's going to be hopefully thousands, tens of hundreds of thousands of views. Okay maybe eight to nine views, right, on this video. And I want this little section of it to be all about the guys that want to build one of these themselves. And at this point, I'm not sure if it'll work, but by the end of this video, we will pull an out drive off with this, and I will show you even more modifications if necessary from this point of the design forward, but I want to show you where I'm at right now. So this is a great time for you to get your notebook and your pencil. And I'm going to do some quick sketching on the dry erase boards of each component. And you can pause it, copy it down so you can build your own if you would like to. Uh, and we'll go from there. I'm going to give you as much pertinent information as I can. And then some of it you're going to have to do a little dreaming yourself. but I've got the jack in here now. It's not fastened in place, even though I'm leaning on it like it is. <laughs> Didn't think about that. But uh, 
I'll show you how I'm putting the, you get you some close up stuff of how the jack is in here and I'll pull it out from underneath here, show you what it looks like and show you how I'm placing it underneath it. And then after that's all said and done, I'm gonna show you this little piece up here. Uh, I'm not gonna have a sketch of this. I'll let you come up with that. That's easy enough because there are some variables I'm gonna talk to that could vary a little bit on your particular out drive depending on what year you got. They're all very, very, very similar. But some little nuances that might help you out uh, when you design and build yours. Okay, let's go over to whiteboard. I'm gonna draw some things up so you guys can take advantage of you know, all this stuff that I've got so far. I think it's gonna work. I am 92 and a half percent sure I'm gonna have to modify something, but I am 92% there as far as my design intent and you know, could be just user interface that might, that might be my problem. Let's go over here and show you some stuff. You guys can, you know, hit your arrow and go a little bit ahead if you're just excited to see how it works or how to pull an out drive off a boat because that's what I'm going to cover in this video as well. So hang in there. You're doing great. You know, if this isn't your thing, if you're not planning on building one, get up, go get yourself a cold snack, wobble pop, barley pop, whatever you guys call it, and get some popcorn or a few more deer sticks out of the fridge and just... You know, what? by the time you're back, maybe this section will be over and you, we'll, we'll keep moving forward. All right. Awesome. Thank you so much. Starting to feel a little like Bob Ross here. We're going to put a happy little whatever. Okay. Let's see what we can do here. So what we've got here, we've got a top piece, which is plywood. We've got a two by four that's been carefully shaped in. This is a side view. Side view, right? Then we've got some, uh, what have I got over there? Yep, I got some of this. Uh, there's a hole here and a hole. I'm just trying to get this close to scale for you to help you out. And then we got this. And then it becomes whole. And then, you know, then it gets dotted here again. Let's just, I know this is uh, probably a waste of your time, but I want you to kind of get, I need to give you an idea of what I'm drawing here. We got another two by four. That happens down here somewhere and it goes do, 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 with some couple more bolt holes like that and then we got the purchased cart that sits in here something like this and we got some uh you know wheelie wheels down here right okay this is what we're starting with now i told my son i took a picture of something like this earlier this week and i said here's my blueprint and his comment back was well, it's blue, <laughs> so I just had to just relay that to you because I, I got a chuckle out of it myself. And then something we're going to get into here is some things that go up in here and then a bottle jack and some pivot point, you know, something like that. We'll get into that a little bit later on. But let's, let's get this part, the top plate right here, right? So this here, looking at it from the top, looks like this, right? This here is 30 inches long from here to here. The width of it is 17 and three quarter. This opening here is uh, what I have here, three and a, yep, three and three eighths. See, I had to refer to my notes. Three and three eighths. The depth of it here, from here to here, was 19 inches. All right? And this was three quarter inch thick. And I'll tell you right now, thicker is better here, not thinner. I don't want it thicker, I kind of probably, I'll show you what's going on when I set one in there. So that's three quarter inch thick. That's the first piece, that's the top piece, right? You got it, hit pause. Zoom in and hit pause or whatever you're doing and then write it down. Okay, unpause, that's gone. This piece here is just a two by four, nothing fancy. We're talking this little guy right here. It's a two by four and it is the same length as this is up above. It's 30 inches long, right? 
And I, I put a little, uh, you know, 45 here just for fun. So it's 30 inches long. And it's a standard two by four in all other respects. It has two holes. Now these bolts I used here were all three eighths bolts for all these points here. They're all three eighths. So there, the first one is two and a quarter back to here from here, two and one quarter from here to the front as well. So we'll just make this line right here, give you an idea. And that is 10 and 5 eighths. Got it? So, and what you want to maintain here for this hole here and here and here and here is the same center to center distance. Got it? So, that's what you need to do. Um, as far as, how far down did I go? I'll give you a measurement. I'll go measure it real quick from here down to here. So it'd be from the top here down to this hole. All right, let me go measure that. Right here is one and three eighths down from the top. So that gives you, every, drop my stuff. Oh my goodness. That gives you this board right here. That's all the detail you need for that. Pause it, record it. Let's move on. We got things to do. All right. This piece here. Now this one, you're gonna need one of these up here, two of these, two of these, four of these. So this part here is the, the long, rounded in, you know, choop, hole here, hole here. This is actually 19 and 5 eighths long, end to end. But the most critical part about this is center to center here, 18 inches. And the reason I have radiuses here is because when this is assembled and it goes up in here so it can articulate, if it was a square corner, it'd be hitting. So I rounded the ends off. And uh, there again, this was a half inch thick birch plywood that I used. So half inch thick by this. So we're, let me write that down for you here. Why was that there? Uh, half inch thick. Got it? Pause it, write it down. So now we've got all the major components of this build. This cart was the cart that I purchased from Harbor Freight, which is also 30 inches by like 17 and three quarter to 18 inches. So that's what this card is. And here is where you got the little boards that are coming across front to back here that are covered in carpet as they, as they are. So, okay, we've gotten that far along. That will get you this all assembly complete. I gave you all the dimensions you need, I think, to make it happen. Oh, this board down here. Okay, the last piece but not the least piece is this one right here. Just a regular two by four, 20 inch long. Got it? Now we're gonna come in where the holes are, coming up from the bottom, because the other one was up down from the top. One and three eighths. From the end to the center of this one, and the end to the center of this one is two inches and 10 and a quarter inches. That's a zero. Okay, that's that piece right there. Pretty simple. Now, that, if that, that's just as least complicated as I can make this, right? And when we'll go back, we'll do a walk around on the piece and we'll show you some other components. All right, back over there. Now the components we have left here, we're gonna tape measure. I'm gonna use the tape measure to rattle off some stuff because I'm not gonna draw this up on the whiteboard for you. What this is, it's a two by four on top of a two by four, centered up. 
what you see hooked on here is whatever you want to come up with and I'm gonna let you come up with this part which is easy enough to do is something that you can trap a bottle jack whatever your bottle jack is this is a four ton from Harbor Freight it is leaking like a sieve everywhere I set it down it leaves a puddle of oil sometime by mid next week this thing will not go up and down i'm almost positive of it because it will be out of oil unless it was actually just overfilled but i don't think that's the case i think i'm gonna have to go get me another one and return this guy absolutely uh straight out of the box anyway i wanted to buy the cheapest thing most people a lot of people may already have this bottle jack here and it's got this has got the expandable screwable up and downer here which is actually benefits you on this particular assembly and uh the other component now this two by four here is currently about yep yep let's call it 14 and 7 eighths long i'm going to show you where it goes and you might want to make yours you know the width of how yours turns out width wise and then we got an upper piece here this one actually i put took a hole saw put a size hole did i put in there inch and a half hole saw went all the way through this two by here again this is another two by same width as the other one below here and then this board centered up on top with just some four wood screws holding it in place this goes like that sits inside there so this thing's trapped up top once i get it under here and this bottom piece is trapped so the jack doesn't just fall out on you and uh we've got to fasten we're at the point where we need to fasten these two in place to make it work now what I'm gonna what I'm thinking about doing is putting some regular three inch wood screws in here to get it to work to see if everything articulates and does what we want and then I'll back those out and put me a quarter inch should be plenty lag screw into here so this thing can actually pivot because this thing's gonna you know we're gonna want this thing to articulate a little bit and also so this one can kind of follow it a little bit so that's that's where it's gonna be you know that's the, I wouldn't call it complicated. It just is what it is. So I'm going to see if I can get you in here. I'm going to turn this thing a little bit, see if I can get the camera shot in here so I can show you what this thing will do. Now, something else you might see going on here. Down below here, see this board right here? That's just a board that's doing nothing. Except, ooh, see what it did there? I've got it as a, Let's just call it a stop. Come on. Get back in there. There we go. I'm using this board as a stop to hold this whole articulation thing up in place where I want it. This is a, a height from bottom of the wheels to the top of about 22 inches right there. Because that's about anywhere from 18 to 22 is what I figured out I needed this to kind of articulate in. And so it's got plenty of height and it's got plenty of ways to get low enough to do what I need to do on these out drives. All right. That being said, let's, let's show you what I did for this upper configuration here and then we'll get busy putting these in. Now what you see here in this configuration, when I set the out drive on here, put full weight on here, this board flexes quite a bit. So all I did is use these bolts here and I put some So you guys may have seen stuff like this before. I'm almost positive you have where you can put these, they got like three little claws in there and you can suck these things down into the wood, hammer them into the wood. So you got threads in your wood. So when you go to put this on, uh, you can bolt it, get in the hole. So you can bolt it down there and you can take this bad boy and just lock it down. I got four of them in here to lock it down, which will add, and that's why this is sticking out the front here. This will add rigidity to the front, plus it also encapsulates the entire out drive. But this is the part that I'm leaving up to your discretion as to how you want to do it. You guys out there, I, I know all, the, all of you watching out there, you've got a creative mind. You can come up with this, no problem. I, I'm, I, ha I have confidence in you. Okay. Now I have my overhead, not my overhead, my little hoist here. 
We're gonna pick up the out drive and we're gonna slide it in here. Get this to cooperate. There we go. So this sits down here like this. Now that board I had right here goes right underneath here and then I can bolt I can bolt that board in. And I'll show you why you need to do that. Now I'm locking I'm getting you in here pretty close so you can see watch right here what this does when I set it down. Cuz it's got a little bit of weight to it. This thing weighs 90 pounds. And see what that does there? See how that board just flexes? Now that board I don't think is going to break, but you can see that flex there. So then that when I put this board, before I take put all the weight on it, I can trap it, all right? And we're going to I'm going to demonstrate how this is all going to work because I'm actually going to remove an out drive on a boat. Okay. Anyway, just wanted to show you that. That's that's one thing I wanted to. Just be clear, this plywood, you know, it could be something thicker even. This thing could be one inch thick. You can make this doubly thick if you wanted to, but when you cut and remove out, you know, five eighths of this stuff. And what I'm saying here is when you remove, you know, this is over, over half easy of the wood, and this is the only thing that's rigid, you're gonna have some flexibility here. And that's okay. Flexing's not breaking, okay? Good deal. Now, like I said before, I've got these boards I cut here. They turned out to be about, oh, let's just call it 10 and a half inches long right here. And I've cut those so I can, you know, raise this thing up like this, drop them all over the floor. But that way, this supports it. And this isn't going to be a waste here because this here is also going to be something that whenever I take it off the out drive off the boat, I can put it, this on here and it, you know, just makes things more rigid. Like I said, now, now if you're doing this type of thing for a living, obviously you're going to do something a little better. You're going to have something more like the steel one I've got over there that I'm going to modify for a steel one. Now, like I said, this, this video is about how to get you the do-it-yourselfer guy without spending a lot of money. Now you're gonna spend some time, but you know, if you're do-it-yourselfer crafting something like this, time is of the essence, right? It's not of the essence. Time is what you got to keep cash in your pocket. So what this is gonna do is get the do-it-yourselfer, a piece of apparatus, device, whatever you wanna call this thing, lift, scissor lift what it's not really a scissor call it what you will uh it's going to be something you can use on your boat that you're going to pull the out drive off you know maybe you pull your out drive off every year every other year you know you got to change the water pump you're checking your boots to make sure there's no you know exhaust boot and stuff to make sure there's no uh or drive shaft boot there's no water in there where water shouldn't be uh checking your seals and, and just, you know, general maintenance that you have to do on these things on a periodic basis. And it costs you a fortune to have somebody else do it for you. You can do it yourself, save yourself a lot of dollars, and gain a lot of pride in knowing you did it yourself, okay? All right. Let's get down underneath here, and we get your camera shot in here, and we're going to show this lifting part of it, how I'm putting that in there, and how I'm going to... This is like, this is my test height. This is where I want it to operate at. It can go lower and it can go a little higher is what we want. And that's where this doesn't have enough stroke to do the full range of everything I want to do. But by having this thing so I can bring it up another inch or take it down another inch or two, gives me some flexibility depending on what boat I've got and what I'm working on. And if you find yourself not having enough height here, 
There again, these little links down below here. Can you see them? This right here, get you over here. One of these, you know, these things here, take them up longer. These can also be made out of, there's plenty of room in here as you'll see when I point you in here in a minute. These are plenty big enough that this could have been a two by two and still work and gain more strength. You're just gonna have to have longer bolts up here in order to do that. So right now this bolt's just long enough to go through that half inch, this inch and a half, and plus there's a washers and lock washers on here. So you'll have to do your own measurements as to what hardware you wanna buy for yours. Depending on how thick, you might have three quarter inch plywood that you're making this piece out of right here. And so you're gonna need thicker bolts. So rest of it's up for interpretation. Let's get this, let's get this put in place. Let's put some wood screws in and uh, we'll go from there. Sounds like a plan. All right. Now I'm gonna try to work in here with you. It's tight in here, but first thing I'm gonna do is take this piece here that we created and we're gonna kind of get it in here like this. And in here, like, in here like this, okay? And this, as far as front to rear goes, you got some wiggle room in here because when this goes down at an angle, Actually, I want it as close to this as possible and give myself a little wiggle room here. But first of all, we're just going to set it flat. And then I'm going to set my bottle jack in here. And then let's we'll see if this shows up. I'm trying to watch the camera to see if I can. This will go in here and sit inside. Whoops. And keep in mind, when you're putting this in here and you're thinking you're putting this block on center, this jack and this base here is not on center, it's off center. So this here is actually off center a little bit as well. And nice thing about when I had this screwed together and I realized that, I could unscrew it, move it over and re-screw that block back on, not a problem. Oh, come on. Get in there square and it'll go, yep, there we go. Now, as you can see, there's a gap right here. But keep in mind the jack's not all the way up and I'm also almost at my working height, right? So now if I wanted to, I can screw this thing all the way up. We can bring this up to where I want it to touch this. Yeah, my jack is actually out of oil. It's getting low on oil. I think we're just pumping air right there. But as you can see here, it needs to be tilted because up here, let me get you down a little lower. Now, as you can see up in here, we can't cover up the slot. This has to be tilted at an angle that keeps that slot wide open. So somewhere like that maybe. And I want to make sure that drive cannot hit. Maybe something a little more like along those lines. So now what I have this, I have this tilted forward a little bit. Now keep in mind when this goes down, this is gonna more, more or less rock down and become more flat. So I wanna make sure I've got a measurement here that's even right here. Let's see if I can get you to see that. Can you see that? Can you, from front, from the edge here in, let's just say that's eight inches there. Do I have eight inches here? Nope, I got seven. So now we got the full weight of what's here on the jack. That's gonna help me hold things in place. This here, I'm gonna actually wanna rotate this a little bit more. I think I want something about right there. Okay, we're close, we're getting close. So there's, we're gonna bring it even further this way. There's nine inches. Well, this isn't precision guys. This isn't precision all down at the bottom here. I'm basically measuring from the front corner of this block to the edge of this here. And I'm at nine inches, nine inches. So then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and drill a hole in here and put a wood screw in there just to hold that in that position. And I'm gonna do it from the same distance back and the same height up on both sides. So the goal is to get this so it articulates about almost the center. It doesn't have to be perfect.
basically on the bottom here, what I did with the screw is this basically on the bottom board that the jack sits on. And I came back, let's just get a measurement here, about five and a half inches from the front edge of this board and about an inch and a quarter up. Actually, I'm sorry, inch and an eighth up. And put a screw in there, drilled it, put a screw in there. That's just gonna hold things in place. I'm gonna put a bigger, like a quarter inch lag screw in here, but I don't wanna tighten it up and bottom it out because I want this thing here to be able to still pivot a little bit. As this comes down, it needs to pivot forward. Now you guys might be asking yourself, what's next? Well, that's it. <clears throat> I put this board back up front here for just to keep my bolts and stuff from losing my bolts and my screws. And uh, we're ready to try it out. Uh, the maiden voyage on this thing is going to be removing an outdrive. We're going to back my boat up in here that I'm, gonna, I'm ready to pull one out of my old start craft. That uh, <coughs> we're going to be installing the SE106 from Stern Drive Engineering back in there. That's, that's going to be the next video most likely. Uh, because I wanted to show you this because it leads up to the next video of installing one, assembling and installing it. And, uh, but you got to have a way to get yours out confidently that's what this is all about so we'll go on to the next portion uh right now we got right now you guys only have to wait a few seconds but we had some more possible severe weather coming in uh we had a tornado pass by here not too long ago about uh, four or five days ago and now it's scheduled to do something very similar to this to the same thing in the middle of the night so hopefully the train wakes me up or i hope i don't hear anything honestly uh but yeah, we're going to pull the boat back out of the lean-to, back it in here halfway, do all the things inside the shop here. I'm going to walk you through how to remove your outdrive step by step. On this particular boat, this uh, what I'm going to show you it applies to most all of them. Now, sometimes if you don't believe what you're seeing, don't be afraid to check out some other videos doing the same thing. Typically, if I'm doing something new, and if you found this channel and you're going to do something new for the first time, I'll watch four to five other videos, honestly, just to see who's got the best technique, who's doing things the easiest way and the correctest, most correct way as possible. So that's what that's all about. All righty. Snap of the fingers, wave of the wand, whatever. We'll be back here in about a second and a half. And uh, we'll back the boat back halfway into the shop and get that outdrive off of it. And that'll be the end of the video once I get the outdrive off. You'll have to watch the next video on the SC106 from Stern Dry Engineering, which is this banner right behind me, uh, to get the new one stuck on the boat. And then after that, it's a matter of, got a few other things I'm gonna do on the boat. We're gonna replace the trim, pump, lift cylinders, some other stuff on there, make this boat like new again. Cool, be back in a second, folks. Okay, folks, if you've made it this far into the video, you deserve an opportunity to own a hat like this. And I'm gonna give you the opportunity to win it. They're not available to buy. I'm gonna give you an opportunity to win it. It's camo, it's a beautiful hat, well-constructed. Uh, tell you what, made in Bangladesh. None of this Chinese stuff, but it's a nice hat. And it says in bright, it's camo as you can see, and it's got bright orange letters that says RMD Creation. That's the channel. If it ain't broke it, fix it till it is. That's what I say at the end of all my videos. You'll be able to win a brand new hat just like this, still in the plastic. <clears throat> you just gotta solve a riddle and leave it in the comments, making it fun for you. Now this behind me, BR549. I want to know what it was associated with. And I've got blanks down here. You can fill it, if you filled in the blanks and leave this down here in the comment section of your YouTube viewing stuff. Leave it in the comments. This is Jay with one, two, three, four, five blanks. Space S. One, two, three, four, five. Maybe six, I don't remember for sure. And with an A. One, two, three more blanks after the A. Fill that in, leave it in the comment section. And you will be entered into a drawing in the continental United States. I must state that because 
I had to ship one of these to Canada once and it cost me a little bit more than double what the hat cost me. <laughs> but I didn't state that in the first one and I had to pay for my mistake. So fill in the blank, put it in the comment. What this BR549 is associated with and you will win an opportunity to win a hat. Your name will go into a, a hat. I'll draw your name out of the, out of said this hat and announce it in videos, upcoming videos, video. So what this does, and I'm going to tell you why I do this. I don't want to have, I don't want to have a bunch of false viewership, you know, hey, win a hat, you know, clickbait stuff, right? Because uh, all of a sudden my comments go up, my views go up and all that fun stuff. Well, that's great. But I want the people that follow me on a regular basis that are my, you know, loyal, you know, okay, it's part of the 19% of my returning subscribers watching my videos show up and leave a comment, get an opportunity to win a hat. I don't care if you've already won a hat. You can win another hat. So leave your comment. What this, these blanks filled in represent. Put it in there. And I'll put your name in the drawing. I will also announce how many people got it right. And then that will be your, no, your one in however many <laughs> people got it right chance of winning. And in an up and coming video. So that's why I do it this way. Is because if you watch this long on some of my videos, and most of my videos are a little long, and I'm a little long-winded in some of these videos, I want to give you know give back a little bit while I can, and then watch upcoming videos because it might be in the next one. It could be four videos from now when I announce the winner. And so far, my audience is fantastic. Some of the greatest viewers in the land, respectful kind with their comments, ask good questions, and I am three for three. I've done this in my videos three times. I've had three hat winners. Yes, and I've done it this same way because I want you, the constant, continuous, the loyal viewers, to have the only opportunity. The people that just click on it, watch something for five minutes, and then give me a thumbs down and leave, there's one of you out there. doesn't happen on every video, but there is one of you out there that takes the time to give me one of these. I like these, not so much these. So don't forget to do this. And if you're not already a subscriber, subscribe. If you're watching on your wife's account, come on, guys. It costs you nothing to sign up for your, your own account. Watch from your account. Leave her subscribed, but then get your own account and subscribe again. Help grow the channel. I appreciate that. Guys? Sorry. Gals? If you're on your husband's account watching, come on. I know that 7% of the viewers are female according to the analytics. So there are some, you know, that it's, I don't know what I'm trying to say here, but like and subscribe, share with your friends, tell them all about what we do here at RMD Creations and the, what the Backyard Marina, what kind of things that dude's up to. Share it, with, share it with people is what I'm saying. All right, now we're at the portion of this video that I just killed another, you know, let's call it three minutes, but I hope it's worth it for somebody. Uh, we're gonna put this thing we built, this lift, we're going to call it an out drive, stern drive jack that we created out of wood with uh, the help of a, you know, a four ton bottle jack, which from Harbor Freight, which leaks like the Valdez oil spill in the Gulf. Okay. It might've been in the Gulf, but I don't, I don't remember where the Valdez, the big tanker that leaked many, many years ago. That thing, it won't even pump up halfway. Now it's leaked out so much, so much oil. So I bought some jack fluid to top it off so I can finish this video. I've got another jack ordered and I'll probably in an upcoming video, actually the, probably the very next video when I use this thing again, show you the other jack I bought and would probably recommend more. It's coming from Amoslam and it's a two stage. It's got a double cylinder. It's got twice as much stroke, still a four ton jack will give me even more range because it's the same height as this one. It'll give me more range than this one currently has. So 
more to come there. So anyway, we're going to now fill up my jack. Won't bore you with that. I'm going to back the boat in here, and I'm going to go through step by step how to properly remove your out drive, your stern drive, or whatever type of words. I'm guessing somebody's already beaten me up in the comments by now uh, as to what it's really called. But stern drive engineering, that's a stern drive that I'm going to put in there. So we'll take the stern drive, the out drive, it's a drive, gearbox, whatever you want to call it. We're going to remove it quickly, effectively, and I'm going to show you how to make it so you don't break your back doing it. And then on an upcoming video, I'm going to show you how to use it in reverse fashion because taking it apart, you'll be able to quickly see how effective going at this in reverse with this tool will be helpful for you. All righty. Let's do it. Dun, 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 Come on down. Well, welcome, fat fishing boat. You want your rear end removed? We can take that right off, no problem. But first, we're going to remove your hydrofoil because you won't be on this outdrive anymore because a new outdrive is going in its place. All right, boy, hope the Jeep starts. Ooh, all you folks that had your fingers crossed, you can uncross them now. It started. Step one, get the rear end of your boat to what I would call somewhat of a flat, semi-smooth surface so your casters can work good. Now, I've thought about this. You could actually take a piece of OSB board out in the backyard in the grass, slam it down underneath here, and these casters will roll on it pretty decent. Okay. Step two. Maybe that was step one. Step two, We're, I'm going to name off the steps. I'm going to get miscount guarantee. Step two, put the shifter in forward. Engage the out drive, you know, the gearbox, not running, obviously. Put it all the way forward. Wide open throttle, forward. I can't stress this part enough. Now me, I can just reach underneath the cover, grab it, and go, blam. That's what I'm going to do. Blam. Told you I was going to say blam. What that does, there's a little shifter thing down there that goes from, you know, looking at it on, from top down. So I'm going to tip my hand this way. It's straight up forward gear is this way, and neutral is this way, and reverse is this way. And it's a slot. So if you try to slide this thing straight off with this this way, you good chance you're going to bend things. Forward gear brings this up, that slot will slide straight off. That's what I'm saying. Now, this might be for the novice, this might be for, you know, most of you that's done this before, you know, this video is over for you. You've already seen the tool. You know how I'm gonna use it, but this is for everybody else that hasn't done this yet and is scared to do it and is nervous to do it. And if you built this apparatus I showed you early in the video, I am highly confident you can pull this off and service it and put it back on okay all right that being said forward gear i'm going to remove the hydrofoil i won't bore you with that because that's not what everybody has so i'm going to take my hydrofoil off and then we'll be right back in it hang on just a minute okay now just to keep life simple i went ahead and removed the prop and as you can see it slid off you can't see that it slid off but it slid off beautifully there is the grease is still in great shape and the prop just slid off like butter. I'm just saying it's like butter. All right, we've got the hydrofoil removed because that's how most people are gonna have their boats without a hydrofoil. Some are, and then you might have to remove it to use this tool we built, but this is where it gets really simple and I can't stress the simplicity enough. This bolt here, that holds your lift cylinders in place. What do we have to do? Take them out. 
That, re that lets the arms move out and down and out of the way. Second thing we'll do, and we'll do this here in a minute, is there's one, two, three, four, five, six nuts. Back those off a little bit. Don't take them all the way off yet, but back them off a little bit. I'm just telling you guys, this is simple. My dogs are barking. And in this case, it's a 9 16 nut. It takes a 9 16 wrench, I should say, to be more correct. Just keep an eye on where your washers go. There's a thin washer here and here. Not all of these are created equal. Thick washers on the outside, thin washers on the inside. Now these might be tight, like that. Now I'm gonna tell you, don't need a fancy pry bar. Do not use this end of the tool. Using my, using my wooden handle, uh, hammer just going against there like that just work this loose these tapered bushings are going to come out hey jack how you doing buddy hey jack oh good boy so now you can see this one's loose i can get these off now i gotta In this case, I use the wooden, so I wouldn't damage. And it's still not letting go of my Ego. There we go. It's letting go now. Now, when I put this together last time, I put grease all over all this, so I wouldn't have any problem with it sticking. So, there again, marine grease in this application is your friend. A little brass. You see how hard I hit that? you got to hit it much harder than that, don't. You'll damage your threads. And you won't like yourself very much. All right. Now me, I'm going to use my impact to back this off. A regular box-in wrench works just as well. It's just a tiny bit slower. This particular one, 5.8 socket, takes care of the business. Now this one just separated for me. Sometimes you have to, I'm going to show you this, I didn't have to do it on this, but sometimes you can lift up on this and do that a couple times and it'll separate for you. Okay, it's not a lot of oil coming out of there. So now that you've got this separated, what I'm going to say here is don't put a pry bar in here. You'll damage these faces and this is a sealed surface. There is a gasket here that seals this to this. Okay. Now it's time for the special tool. Okay, I've decided there's only two places really this can leak from and this oil jack, this, this has practically leaked all its oil out now. I back this all the way off and look at that, there's a cut O-ring. And it looks like there's two O-rings, but this one doesn't look cut. It's probably just the same quality chubber. I'm going to pull that one off. It looks like there's two of them here. I'm going to pull that one off and take a look at it too. All right, we seem to have full stroke back. Okay, now for the part that has gone untested. Will this work? This first time I slide it in here, honest to goodness, folks. Okay. <clears throat> That's as far in as that goes, and I'm not sure that's enough. Get down here and see. So I want to put uh, go ahead and jack this up till it meets the cavitation plate. I 
Can I get these holes to line up? Can I get a witness? Well, it does look like those holes will not line up for me, but that's an easy adjustment. I just don't need to make it right now. Okay, that was worth a try. So what I'm gonna do now, we'll go ahead and take off these other two bolts up here. Or nuts, I've already got the other four off. And this would be enough to hold it. Oh, dropped it on the floor. Where did it go? Nobody knows. All right, let's see if I can just go ahead and There we go, sliding off. There we go. That's a beauty, Clark. Now, as you can see here, the advantage of having this I'm not having to pick up anything that weighs 90 pounds and manhandle it the nice thing is when I go to put the other one back in or if I'm resurfacing this one to go back in I don't have to pick this up I can manage this gasket here there's another there's gaskets there's an o-ring somewhere where to go that's on the other side it's stuck to this piece we can manage all that from this point very easily without break, breaking our backs. The nice thing is when we go to go back in, we can lift this up and down and get our lined up dead on. This is our third and fourth hand, is what I'm saying. Because when you put this back together, you gotta, you gotta hold this up and get this guided in there and try not to mess up any gaskets. This will do the job, is what I'm saying. I'm stoked, that's awesome. Well folks, just that easy. You can remove the stern drive, out drive, whatever drive, gearbox drive, you know, whatever you want to call it. You can take it off just that easy. You saw once we got to the taking it off, how fast and simple that is. And I'm going to get in here and show you one more thing real quick because I think it's important to show you. So right down in here, you see this little straight area here? That's your shifter. If it was like this, Clear over like that, that's reverse. Somewhere in the middle here is neutral. This is drive, forward. That's why this has to be straight because there's a little U-shaped piece underneath it. Goes right over the top of this when you're taking it off and when you're putting it in. And you gotta have that straight, so that's why you have. That's why it's so important to be in forward gear. Otherwise you could fight pulling that off and then people start prying it and then these get bent. Now there are a lot of other videos out there that show how to change the oil. A lot of my videos, I show how to change the gear oil, how to change the water pump on this. And we'll have another video soon. I had, I'm not sure I changed the oil last fall, but when I don't remember, when in doubt, change the oil out. So that's what we do. Anyway, that was easy, right? It's just as easy to go back in. Now the reason, the other thing that's positive when it's in forward gear, when you go to put this back in, when this is in forward gear, it will allow you to grab that out drive shaft where your prop goes and you can rotate it a little bit and get that upper gearbox to move a little bit so you can get your splines lined up and then it'll go right in. This, when you reinstall it, I'm gonna tell you right now because I'm not gonna to get to the install video for another few days and you wanna see the video for another four to five days. If you're attempting to go for this, when you go to reinstall it, do not install it with a hammer. We use no hammers and no pry bars to remove it. We will use no hammers and no pry bars. I did use a hammer handle, okay? But it should go on and off by hand. Anything you have to do, drive, mash, hammer, you could be wrecking some stuff. And there's nothing on the outside of this case you really wanna beat on too much. All right, well that was a lot of fun. That was a project. I've got another tool in my arsenal of things. 
you have another tool in your arsenal because now you know how to build one. And if it doesn't work, it's pretty easy to make adjustments. Say for instance, this thing needed to go taller. Well, guess what? You put longer arms on this thing so it would articulate up higher, uh, reach a higher max. Then you put another block or two under your jack or you get a jack. I'm gonna show you when I go to put this back together, a modification that I am gonna make. I bought this jack here, sits here, and it will just leak down really slow. Now, because it can do that, I'm gonna show you another, another thing we didn't waste our time on. In case this jack had a slow leak and it kept coming down until this bottom here hit the floor and then it tipped over onto its face, I'm gonna show you what you can do. I think I might already be there. No, I gotta come up quite a bit yet. So this thing is already leaked down. This jack is a piece of junk. So close, get there. Huh, I can't get there. There, that works for now. So those boards we cut earlier in the program, I let it all the way down. Now it's resting against those boards, which I want to slide forward just a little bit. There. Now with the hydraulic jack obviously being weak and not capable of doing any work whatsoever, this is now sitting on those boards and those boards won't fail on you. You follow what I'm saying? It all makes sense, right? All right, that's, I'm pretty impressed that this worked <laughs> first time round. The bottle jack fought me. The other thing I wanna do is the board that's up front here, it will not, yes it will, I was wrong, dun dun dun, back down here, for some reason I didn't think it was going to fit, but now, my bolt holes lining up. There we go. That offers up quite a bit of support, actually. You saw that thing just kind of like lift right up. So that's, I thought it was gonna have to, it's right there though. I mean, it is right there. I thought I was gonna have to deepen it up just a little bit, but we got away with it. All right, this video has gone on plenty long enough, at, I think at this point, and I appreciate you guys all hanging out here till the end. Uh, you know, that thing is just like, I'm thrilled with the results. Uh, it's obviously I had a little bit of a cheat and that cheat is I already had a lift and I had some things to go by, but you already have a cheat now too, because you have the blueprints from the blueprint board. So you can get a 90% chance of getting it right the first time without very many mods. Now, the other thing I did here is my jack wouldn't quite go up high enough as the boat sits because I'm kind of got the Jeep and stuff's on a hill but I was able to put the trailer tongue jack down, crank it up so it was up about that high over where it touched the ground, and it brought the back end down enough to allow me to make that work. So you got some, you got some give and take there that you can use, to use, you know, use it to your advantage. Wow, okay. I had to look to make sure the mic was on because you don't know how many times, maybe five. Okay, it was more than that that I have been talking away and realized when I go to play it back, it's just, and that's frustrating as all get out. Okay, anything else we need to cover in this video? Absolutely not. Now, you can leave, you can, you gotta remove gaskets here. You're gonna have to watch another video. I've done this before, on this very boat actually, more than once. I've done, pulled these off multiple boats more than once. And not because of bad workmanship on my part, it's because it's service, right? Now, what you can do when you're in here 
is you're going to go in here and you're going to check that boot. You're going to run your fingers around the inside and you're going to check that boot for cracks. The good news is there is absolutely no water in here and there should never be water in there. Your universal joints will get a lot of rust and a lot of water and bearings and water don't mix. So if you pull that off and there's a bunch of water in there, check your seals, check your gimbal boot, just check things over because no water should be in there. No water should be in there, period. Not even a little bit, because if there's a little bit, there's gonna end up being a lot bit and you won't like the results. But this one here, the universal joint is well lubed. The shaft was well greased. All the stuff that I had in contact that move has still got grease on it after being in the water for many, many hours and miles because I put marine grade grease in there and it just makes things go apart, come apart and go together so much easier. All right, I'm done. Early in the video, you saw information about And so don't be afraid to leave a comment. If you don't know what I'm talking about, you, pa you fast forwarded in the video and you missed an opportunity. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe. I appreciate your viewership. You guys are awesome. And I'm gonna move on to the very next project. After I get this one edited and uploaded right away, jumping into the next one. No time, no rest for the weary. I got to get this done. I got to keep my projects moving. I've got a yard and a barn full of projects and I'm excited to work on them all, but I got to eat this elephant one bite at a time. And that's what I intend to do. Be kind to one another. This is Michael saying, if it ain't broke, fix it till it is. And we'll see you on the next video. Mm -hmm.